Greetings, sports racers. Here we are, individual oral part four. This is Mr. Lewandowski. I have really examined this. And so have you, of course, because you're an excellent student, but this is the individual oral rubric. And after examining this, I'm ready to build this, which is all about the structure of the individual oral. So what do we have? We've got a global issue. So you know from previous videos that we've got, you know, our global issues might look like this. Great selection of choices right there. Um, we have framed those issues in such a way that we sound like we're smart. And now we're ready to think about what we're actually going to do for the oral. Um, I'm actually going to build an oral step by step. So um, this is the next step is to, is to think about structure. And uh, so I think about an oral being uh, 10 minutes. So 10 minutes at 160 words per minute. I probably do these videos, I'm probably about 175, uh, a lot of times maybe 180. Um, 160 is a, is a pretty good pace. Like a lot of your TED Talks that you hear are usually around 160. Um, so that's how I figured um, that you're talking about 10 minutes of time. That is 1,600 words of speaking. Uh, obviously, your oral is not going to be written out, but that's, I mean, you could write one out. You could write a 1,600-word essay um, to practice and then, you know, really get your language down tight. Um, don't memorize it because it's not supposed to sound like it's a speech that's been memorized, and that would be problematic. Um, but as a writing exercise, it's really going to help you uh, firm up your language and use the correct kind of verbs and things like that. So uh, 1,600 words is what you're looking at. And those 1,600 words are going to be divided between speaking about a global issue on top, which is going to be pretty brief. You're going to introduce your global issue up at the top and then divide the rest of your time between examining two texts, a translated text and uh, I'm speaking English here, so our translated text is going to be translated into English, and the other text is going to be originally written in English. So I'll just refer to that as the translated and the English. So I think I'll move over to talk about uh, the specific requirements things that according to the rubric uh, you should be doing in your oral and then I'll return to this little box over here about what how you distribute these 1600 words between all the things that you need to do so based on the rubric what will happen in your oral uh, well in your oral you are going to be uh, demonstrating knowledge and understanding When I think of, you know, in the context of IB literature, knowledge and understanding really means layers of meaning. It means that you, um, you have interpreted whatever, whatever um, meaning is implied, what is, what is, what is there, you know, what's, what's, you've, you've got it all, thematically, conceptually. Knowledge and understanding layers of meaning. And that layers of, the, 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 the knowledge and understanding that you have is for the extract that you have chosen. It's for the extract. But it's also for the whole work. And you can demonstrate both of those in the time that you have to speak, which is five minutes for the translated text and five minutes for the English text. Uh, so that is the first part of the rubric, and that's really a set. The other thing you're going to be doing is you're going to be persuasive in your conclusions um, persuasive in conclusions you draw. So conclusions that you make or create um, about the nature 
of your global issue. in your extract and the larger work. And as you're doing that, this kind of comes out of this, you're supporting those conclusions with key references, like the right references from the extract, uh, which would be quotes. For the rest of the work, you know, you're not going to be quoting the rest of the work probably, um, but you'll be correctly like surfacing the appropriate details uh, when you're talking about how that global issue is present or whatever conclusions are valid with regard to that global issue for the work overall. You'll be justifying that with references uh, that are well chosen from the extract. The other big thing that you're going to be doing is analyzing and evaluating the effectiveness of authorial choices in relation to the global issue. So it's kind of like, you know, we really stress theme a lot uh, as English teachers, and we've kind of, for the purposes of this particular oral, we've kind of replaced theme with global issue, you know, um, so that when you're analyzing and evaluating the effectiveness of authorial choices, normally we do that to, uh, to ultimately, uh, you know, arrive at some kind of conclusion about the work, about the work's ultimate purpose and value, you know, to humans. Um, but for this one, it's all about that global issue. Where do you see the global issue? How is that global issue what, what aspects of that global issue, what truth about that global issue, or it's almost like what theme about that global issue is raised in the extract and in the work as a whole. Um, analyze and evaluate. Evaluate is important in that, like, if you're reading some, you know, if you're reading Shakespeare or um, Cormac McCarthy or just something that's just like, just a work of genius and it's just a breathtaking work of literature and you're evaluating those authorial choices, it's not about saying, like, you don't have to criticize her choices to evaluate them. What you're really doing is identifying the most effective, the, the choices that really bring out the essence of that global issue. That's what you're doing, uh, and, and, and that is an active evaluation, an active evaluation. If you want to score high, it would be good to use language that indicates, it makes it very clear to the listener that that is what you're doing, that you are, that you are identifying the most effective or that you're identifying the 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 most uh, the most important choices that that's going to help them give you a high score. The other thing that you're doing, oh well, no, that's it. That's what's happening. So you've got these. And so the question becomes how much of my time am I doing each one of these and in what order do these happen? And um, I came to the conclusion that um, that a workable way to do it, and I, I like to divide up the words just so I know, is it, should I talk about this for one minute, two minutes, a sentence, four sentences? Um, and if you sketch out the words, I, th I think that this could be an effective structure. Um, so you begin with your global issue and works. And this is kind of like an introductory time. It's very brief. It's very brief because what, what, what IB likes you to do is to get right into examining choices. So you don't have to talk about why that global issue is relevant or, I mean, you, you know, you'll probably do that as you proceed through your works. 
but any any nuance to the global issue you're going to be surfacing by examining those authorial choices and um, and talking about your conclusions that you've drawn from the global issue so I would think that this one you're thinking one minute or less definitely you know maybe 50 to 100 words and then when we get into talking about the works there is a, like a parallel process and you could you could choose to uh, to structure this a couple different ways but this is just one that I think could be effective because the IB literature does stress that you want to have balance between texts and balance between the amount of time that you're talking about the extract and the amount of time that you're talking about the work so that those are really important in how you structure this um, and I when I think about the global issue the global issue is an overall thing you know so if we look use our sentence frames here and just pick one we could say emotional responses to war in literature is the global issue um, each work is going to have a like like I, I consider them kind of like a thesis statement, like a mini thesis statement that's with respect to this global issue. And it's like work A, the thesis statement is in this work, the author uses uh, metaphor, imagery, and uh, and tone to surface a or to explore the way that war is present after it's over. You know, that's like a possible... In this work, the author chooses to use um, imagery and through the structure um, to to surface mainly a, a visceral, emotional response to the horrors of war. You know, so you can see that like it's like a mini thesis statement over here, a mini thesis statement over here. So um, I'm going to call that for our purposes right here like a GI global issues, global issue thesis. And then over here, we have another little global issue thesis. Global issue thesis. And then, of course, what we have in our two works is we have a we have a translated, and we have like an English or whatever language it is that your course is in. And so each one of these little thesis statements kind of like they 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 open and give some internal structure to this five minutes, which is like wow, that is not very much time. So as I'm trying to build this thing, I'm probably going to learn a lot about how much I can talk. Um, but I, but I would at least mentally divide it into two sections that are equal in length. Um, so it's like you've got your global issues thesis and then you have your extract. And in that extract, you are going to examine two or three specific choices. Maybe more, depending on the level of detail that you go into for those choices, um, or just you know the the way that they are. But here's where here's where you're going to be quoting from the text and really doing this work right here. Analyze and evaluate the effectiveness of those authorial choices in relation to the global issue, or it all ties back to the global issue. That's why you have this like little global issue thesis right here about like you know in this particular work the global issue because because your global issue ex has to exist in both works that's why your final wordsmithing of your global issue you know your final determination of like yeah this is my language my global issue is the impact of blank on blank and you know exactly what these words are you won't really know what that is until you have both extracts of both works selected and you're like okay what is actually in this work and then you have to you know, it has to be something that's also present in the rest of the work. So you can't just choose the, you know, the one moment in the novel 
where the weather is described and then really have a great weather related global issue or something like that. Um, it has to be something that's that's in the issue that's in the work. Um, so this is going to be similar. You're going to have your extract and you're going to have two or three choices in relation to that extract. You're also in this this little portion right here, which is like okay, so we're dividing up our words. I think like you know 400 here and 400 here. So um, so you'll you'll probably like contextualize that your extract a little bit. You're going to locate it within the text very quickly. One one sentence. You'll talk about which, about what characteristics or what quality or understanding or what, you know, what uh, what conclusion in relation to the global issue is the author offering in the extract and the work. So um, we've got our global issue thesis. We're going to introduce that. We're going to introduce the extract a little bit. We're going to talk very in very careful detail about two or three choices and their effectiveness and how they frame that global issue. Um, and that's going to be about 400 words, you know, so like maybe two minutes of talking. Um, and then within that same text, you're going to move, you know, you have to let the audience know you're moving, that you're going to move from talking to the extract to in the work overall. Um, and in that work overall, this is where you could you know, if you talked about the global issue and, and how it's surfaced here, here is where you might put your conclusions. You know, ultimately, the work frames the global issue in a way that, you know, those are the, that's the kind of language that you might use. Um, but so that you have a conclusions, conclusions um, about the global issue right here. And this will be similar for some more brackets here so it's a little clearer. So here's where your conclusions, and this is where you talk about the whole work. And here we have some conclusions about the global issue. In the whole work. So you can see that this structure allows you to do all the things that you're supposed to do. So I almost think about the, the 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 whole process as like two minutes about this, two minutes about this, two minutes about this, two minutes about this. That's eight minutes, and then maybe one minute here, you know, and then you know it, it, it'll never work out exactly. And then uh, after ten minutes of speaking, your teacher will stop you and say, uh, "Well, then they'll start asking questions to further draw out the depth of understanding that you have." Um, for knowledge and understanding and the layers of meaning, either for the extract or for the whole. I think that that is everything that I want to cover in this video. Um, the next video, I'm going to go back. So now that I know, now that I know that this is what I'm doing, I'm going to go back into my extract from All the Pretty Horses, and I'm going to talk about the global issue that I'm that I'm actually going to use um, in relation to this text, and I'm going to start to so so all of this doing all of this um, is really going to help you with three aspects of the rubric. Uh, that's going to help you if if you've done a good job in in handling these you know everything that's here. You understand what I'm saying, and you're going to kind of follow through with it. Um, this is going to help you for your criterion A which is understanding and interpretation. It's going to help you for your criterion B, which is analysis and evaluation. Uh, and it's going to help you with your criterion C, which is focus and organization. Criterion D is all about the language that you use. And that is why I do recommend writing not your whole thing, not your, not, you're, like you're gonna, not going to memorize it and then deliver a 10-minute speech. Um, that, that, that is not recommended, and, it, and I think it would be it could get you in trouble um, because this is an extemporaneous, you're speaking from bullet points. But what you do need to do is start to ask a bunch of questions and I'll ask those questions and start to examine those questions is like, what is the language? You know, kind of like with the sentence frames that we used here, like, you know, this is the language that you want to use to frame your issue in a way that's, that's a sophisticated language. 
you need to look at the entirety of your of your speaking for 10 minutes because you're going to be evaluated on the accuracy and the clarity of your language throughout um, and you're doing some pretty complicated speaking here extemporaneously so that requires a lot of practice and um, a good way to do that is to focus on verbs and to um, and to and to work with some sentence frames that will give you confidence using varied forms of syntax uh, more complex sentences and um, and that will be something that we do in a future video as well